Hi students, okay, welcome back to respiration. So we'll be looking at the respiratory system in humans. So the respiratory system, as you can see on the image here itself on the diagram, air will flow through your nasal cavity. Okay, so your nasal cavity itself is a very moist cavity so that whatever air that flows into the lungs will be kept warm, which is why you can be in a very freezing country but you don't feel that your lungs temperature or the air that you breathe in is equally cold. Okay, so let's say if you are in a country that is negative 2 degrees Celsius, your lungs definitely do not feel the negative 2 degrees Celsius because they have been warmed up along the nasal cavity. Okay, so it's this part here. At the same time, your nasal cavity also contains little hair and mucus. So this little hair and mucus will trap your dust foreign particles and bacteria ensuring that whatever air that goes into your lungs is clean okay which is also why it's better to breathe through your nose rather than through the mouth itself because your mouth do not contain the same components that is carried in the nose itself okay, your nose also have sensory cells which will help you detect smells which is why some people do not like the smell of durian because they, they can smell that it has got some chemical component that smells strangely like kerosene okay so it will tell you which are the scents that you like and which are the scents that are harmful and you're supposed to stay away from so from the nasal cavity itself the air will then pass through into the larynx and then into the trachea and then into your bronchus here into your alveolus which is your cauliflower looking components here okay so alveolus is singular alveoli will be the plural form and these are the air sacs which can actually expand and contract depending on inhalation or exhalation okay your track here i want to point out also see all these shapes over here all these components these are actually the cartilage okay it doesn't wrap around fully around the track here but instead it is a c-shaped hook okay so it hooks about three quarter way through the trachea and it provides support for the trachea which is a muscle by itself so of course the muscle is not able to stand by itself which is why it has got the c-shaped cartilage c-shaped because that is the shape of the cartilage itself instead of being fully wrapped around it so the next part will tell you more about what i went through okay so just briefly going through here your trachea has incomplete C rings. These are the C shape and not O shape. It's not completed here. Okay, your trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles will have ciliated cells. Ciliated means they are tiny hairs on these cells to sweep foreign particles upwards away from the lungs. And you also have gland cells that secrete mucus to form a thin lining so that air is able to pass through smoothly. At the same time, it is also able to remove harmful particles. Okay, so bronchi are the two small tubes that enter into the lungs, and it will then further branch out into the bronchioles. Bronchioles will then further branch out into alveoli. Okay, alveoli is the important one that you will have to uh, take note of the properties. So alveoli, because it is involved in your gaseous exchange, these are your alveoli here. You can see the blood capillaries which wrap around each and every single alveoli. So from your circulatory system, the heart, okay, if you recall, you will have your pulmonary vein. And from your pulmonary artery, which pumps the blood away from the heart. Okay, so recall back, both your pulmonary arteries will contain deoxygenated blood. So this deoxygenated blood will then enter into the capillaries which surround each and every alveoli okay, or alveolus or singular. So during the wrapping around of the alveoli that you see here, there will be gaseous exchange. Okay, so carbon dioxide will leave and oxygen gas is going to enter back into these uh, capillaries which wrap around. So these capillaries will then go back into your pulmonary vein which contains your oxygenated blood and these will then enter into the heart itself. Okay, So the pulmonary vein, it goes into the left atrium of the heart to revise back your circulatory system. Okay, So in order for the diffusion to be very efficient, you have got all these different types or different characteristics of your alveolus itself. It's only one cell thick, 
you have got a lot of capillaries so that is a capillary network again thin layer of moisture similar to your plants in the plants your leaves itself between your mesophyll cells you have got a thin layer of moisture for efficient diffusion of gases okay you also have a thin layer of moisture along your nose region so that gas can pass through easily okay so next part here pleural cavity is between the uh, the lungs itself so there are lubricating fluids okay so that when the lungs expand and contract it is easy and there's no tension between it okay ribs you have got two types of muscles external and internal intercoastal muscles so external intercoastal muscles it works in opposite direction which is what we call antagonistically okay so you would have seen this term during in your digestive system topic whereby we talk about your antagonistic muscles in the esophagus you have got your circular muscles and your longitudinal muscles you will also see this when we talk about the eye later on okay in order for you to see things clearly other antagonistic muscles you have will be things like for example your bicep and your tricep especially like think when you curl your arms to pick up a cup or to work out the muscles itself Okay, so in order to move, the muscles will work in opposite direction, one contracting and one relaxing.